Bruh. Some of you might know Optimum Tech. He's basically the Ronaldo when it comes to peripheral or hardware reviews. And he made a mouse called the Zero Mouse. I got this thing five days prior to release, so I'm really rushed making this video. But I'm still trying to tell you everything you need to know before buying this mouse. So Optimum Zero Mouse is releasing on the 16th of November 2023. There's only gonna be 1,100 units, unfortunately. And I was really lucky to actually get one prior to release. And what's even more lucky is that I got a left-handed version because I play left-handed. The way I got it was really, really lucky because I made a Twitter post showing the uh, prototype of the Zero Mouse, which I uh, borrowed from a friend of mine who actually got it from Optimum himself to try and test out because he knows a lot about mice and stuff. And he sent that prototype to me and I posted it on Twitter saying how much I love using it. it despite the fact that I play left-handed and it's not really that optimal. Optimal, optimum, you know, optimum tech. So I mentioned optimum tech on this Twitter post and he saw that I had his prototype and that I was using it left-handed. So he decided to send me a left-handed version, which I'm incredibly thankful for. Quick note before we actually start the review, uh, just saying there are not gonna be left-handed uh, zero mice available, unfortunately. I misunderstood Optimum Tech when I made a Reddit post uh, showing these mice where I said uh, there are gonna be left-handed mice available, but that's not that's not the case. There might be uh, left-handed versions coming out later on when there are gonna be more improved versions of this mouse. When I first used the final version of the Zero Mouse, I just instantly fell in love with it. I felt so many more like differences between uh, between the final version and the prototype that I just wow this thing is like little did he know when Optimum sent this mouse to me is that I have a few mice to say the least <laughs> and I'm a bit knowledged when it comes to PC peripherals and so I basically have all true fingertip mice on the market and we're gonna compare all of them to the Optimum Zero mouse. What really differentiates this mouse is that the ergonomics are really, really distinctly made for your fingers. Because the lower the overall height of the mouse is, the more in line you feel with your overall fingers, and it just feels like where you're pointing to with your fingers is actually where you're trying to aim. And I also want to point out that I'm not sponsored or affiliated with Optimum in any sort of way. I have gotten this uh, Zero Mouse for free, and I'm really thankful for that but that is not going to influence my review in any way. So let's start off by actually talking about the material that the mouse is actually made of. The mouse is made out of PA12. That is a plastic filament used for uh, 3D printing and obviously this mouse is 3D printed. The material itself is actually quite durable and at the same time quite light, but using more force than you would actually use in normal use would probably break this mouse. Like, don't press it too far. <laughs> it's, as you can see, like this mouse is quite flimsy. If you suffer from gamer rage and throw your mouse all over the place or smack against it or whatnot, this mouse is far likely not going to survive it. But yeah, you should probably work on that instead of buying a new gaming mouse. But for every person who actually just normally uses this mouse, it's not gonna break. Even if you like really press hard on the clicks you can't really break it i'm really pressing hard but on the sides if you press really hard you could break it but yeah if you just use it normally you're not gonna break it the mouse comes in at around 29 grams on my scale which is one of the most lightest mice on the market whilst having one of the best if not the best uh, internals on the entire market which is the razer viper v2 pro of course Quick note before you actually try to buy the Zero Mouse, the PCB of the Razer Viper V2 Pro and the battery is not included. So you have to buy a Razer Viper V2 Pro separately, disassemble it and install the PCB and the battery 
inside of the Optimum Zero mouse. Now let's talk about the clicks. These clicks are the most unique clicks that I've ever used on any gaming mouse whatsoever. They have such incredible pre-travel and post-travel. It's almost like you can breathe on the mouse and you can actuate it. But at the same time, it doesn't feel like you accidentally actuate the clicks when you like swipe the mouse and put it back on the mouse pad. You do not actuate it. I just absolutely love this click mechanism. Like you can spam clicks so incredibly fast and the way it is actually made is so unique and yeah, it's just awesome. And now for a little sound test. Talking about the scroll wheel, the scroll wheel of the Razer Viper B2 Pro that is inside of the Zero mouse is not affected negatively in any sort of way. It basically works like the one from the Razer Viper B2 Pro. One thing that could be annoying for some users though is that the height of the clicks are different to the height of the scroll wheel itself. So if you're someone that frequently switches between your mouse fingers to your scroll wheel, that little height difference could actually be a negative aspect, but it's not really that detrimental in my opinion. Now let's talk about the side buttons. Well, or in fact, let's not talk about it because there are no side buttons. But in my opinion, that's not really a problem because when using fingertip grip, you do not actually want to click on side buttons. As you can see, if I press on side buttons, my aim is actually influenced by it because my grip is so not actually stable that if I press on it, the mouse moves in a way that I do not want it to. Now, let's talk about the dimensions. Uh, the overall length of the mouse, if you measure it from the far back up to the front, is 84 millimeters. But the effective range where you can actually use this mouse is in around 77 millimeters, because you cannot actuate the clicks all the way up to the front. And that could be an issue for people with really hard, large hands, because I have 18 by 9.5 centimeter hands, and while I have medium hands and it just works perfectly, people with 20 centimeters of length on their hand might actually struggle using this mouse. The width is in around 52 millimeters in the middle and 54 to around 57 millimeters of width on the back of the mouse. The reason is because the sides of the mouse are actually shaped in a way that accommodates your fingertip grip really well. It's slanted up to, up to the top a little bit and holding it just feels absolutely amazing and unique and is not something that you can have on any other mouse that I know of. And the height of the mouse on the right side is around 15 millimeters and around 18 millimeters on the other side. And so the clicks itself are also slanted and that feels really nice for finger to grip and is also quite unique. And now let's do a comparison between the Zero mouse and other mice that have a similar size. So here are the mice that I would compare the Zero Mouse to. There's the G-Wolves HSK Pro 4K, the G-Wolves HSK Plus 4K, <laughs> a chopped up uh, MM710, a Razer Viper Mini, a PMM CBR 8K, a PMM CBR, a G-Wolves HTX 4K, and a G-Wolves regular HSK. Talking about the click height, the only mouse that has a lower click height than the Zero mouse is the HSK Pro 4K. But the click height is so low that if you hold it at the front, for example, your thumb is too thick. Like if you have a regular sized thumb, it just goes over the sides itself and that does not feel really nice. So what I do on this mouse is just that I grip it really far back. And it's really quite nice and usable, but I still prefer the Zero Mouse. The HSK Plus, however, is a lot more usable at the front because you have a bit more click height. And yeah, that feels a bit nicer. And more in the back, you can also use it. You have a bit more height. Uh, so it accommodates for more larger hands that still want to use fingertip grip. But what both of these mice come really short of is the length. The Zero Mouse has a bit longer length with 78 millimeters and for at least medium sized hands, it feels like you have a lot more 
range of motion because of it. As you can see, with fingertip mice, you want to have a nice range of motion. You want to do this with your hands to have a lot more ability to microcorrect. And with the HSK Pro, it just feels a bit odd, as well as the HSK Plus. If you play a relaxed fingertip like this, it just feels really odd. You have to play it more like this, in my opinion, to actually get the most out of it. They're still really good mice and you can totally use them. I just really think that this Zero Mouse is truly unique and feels a lot better in my hands. Now comes the idea of uh, chopping a mouse in half. Do not do this. This is complete F tier. This is stupid. First of all, your sensor position is really far in the back if you chop it off and that feels completely garbage. <laughs> Thank God this mouse was only like 15 euros. But yeah, if you chop it off in half, you cannot basically use this. You cannot basically sell it or, or return it or whatever. It's, it feels like shit. Do not do this. Yeah, just yeah, do not do this. Then there's the Razor Viper Mini. As you can see, it's a bit more larger, but it has these side curves, which also force you to play it more like this instead of playing a more relaxed fingertip. And on the Zero Mouse, like I said, the sides are slanted in a way that accommodate your fingers really well, so you can use a relaxed fingertip grip without losing stability, which is just awesome. Then there's the PMM CBR 8K. This is the 3D model. I have the internals of the Zaunkönig M2K, which, it's, which it is made for right here on a different mouse, but I think I shouldn't even talk about this mouse anymore because you cannot buy the internals of the Zaunkönig M2K anyways. So I could still talk a bit more about the shape. It's completely flat on the sides. Like it's, it's not even angled or anything. And uh, in conjunction with the sensor position, it just, the entire mouse just felt awkward. Like it's a bit too wide and I didn't really like it. It's, it's eh. If, the, if a PCB for the Zaunkönig M3K comes out and it's compatible with this mouse, I still wouldn't do it. It's kind of obsolete. It's a meh mouse. Then there's the uh, PMM CBR regular version with uh, Razer Orochi internals. And well, it's not really fully assembled because I hate this thing. I disassembled it and yeah, it's just, it's, I hate this thing. I just absolutely hate it. It just feels like a brick. It's, it's not ergonomic at all. There's not really any sort of thought that came into producing this mouse. It just feels, uh, yeah, like a brick. Just don't use this, don't buy this. I cannot recommend this. Then there's the uh, G-Wars Hardy X. Uh, this is one, one of the mice that also comes really close in terms of click height um, compared to the Zero Mouse. And it's also a really, really top tier mouse. It has also really low weight, uh, like 39 grams. Um, it's really well made for like a hybrid grip between fingertip and claw where you like press the mouse itself on your back and yeah if you if you're someone who likes to do this to get a more, bit more artificial control then you should buy this mouse instead of the zero mouse and then there's the regular hsk if you're on a budget and you want to have a shape that is similar to the hsk plus which is a bit more smaller but not really that detrimental you can still totally do this like if you just want to dab your toes into using fingertip mice this is really good and it doesn't really come close to the zero mouse the kick height is just a lot more and it's not really shaped ergonomically for your fingertips and yeah if you want to dab your toes into using fingertip mouse mice for a budget you can totally do this but i think the zero mouse is still better and the last mouse i would like to compare it with was the zaunkönig m2k I had the Zaunkönig M2K, but I sold it, so I don't have it right here to compare. I'm going to show a few pictures, but as you can see, the Zaunkönig M2K is a V-shaped mouse, and that felt quite awkward in my hands. 
it was totally usable and the overall weight and the internals are basically the best on the market but the shape was just not it, it i don't know why it's a v-shape the v-shape doesn't really accommodate a relaxed uh, fingertip grip that well like imagine this would be like a v like why would you have your uh pinky finger like all the way back here i don't get it um and for more uh controlled fingertip like this it also didn't feel nice because the slant all the way to the back it just feels awkward like sure like it's a good mouse but i think the shape of the uh zero mouse is more thought out and a lot better for fps okay now I'm going to show you how to install the Razer Viper V2 Pro internals inside of the Zero Mouse. The first thing you want to do is you want to remove the scroll wheel from the PCB. That's like really easy. Just take it out. And then you want to slide this thing in like this while bending the uh, mouse click and this little holder for the side button. Be really careful when doing this because uh, you can break the plastic if you're not careful. Uh, see, I'm bending the click and the scroll wheel holder. I'm trying to like slide it in through and now I'm through. There is gonna be a uh, install guide coming up from Optimum. So the way I'm doing it might just be wrong. Um, I'm not sure about that but let's continue. And now the sensor is going inside of the shell and the clicks are aligned with the switches. That's good. And as you can see here, there's a hole and also below here, there's also a hole. You have to like align these so the mouse actually holds up well. And now that we're in, we're going to take one of the screws, which is inside of the Razer Viper V2 Pro. I'm not going to show you how to disassemble a Viper V2 Pro. There are enough videos on the internet. Um, take one of these screws. Okay, now that we've done that, take the scroll wheel, put it in. You have to like bend it a bit again and we're in as you can see it's all working yeah that's how you assemble it one thing that i want to point out is that if you plug in the mouse to charge it you cannot use the mouse anymore like i cannot actuate the clicks anymore if this thing is in see it's not actuating Mouse, mouse uh, scroll wheel still works, but it just doesn't work. So you cannot use this mouse wired. Taking it out. And as you can see, I can actuate it again. Um, if you sort of feel like you're struggling actuating the click, trying to like press the PCB a bit more inside of the shell like this to give it a bit more leeway. it harder I'm trying to like bend it a little bit because because the pre and post treble is so small you have to like make it work a little bit like another negative aspect of this mouse but if you find your preferred distance it is going to work permanently as you can see I have not had an issue playing in-game where suddenly the actuation stopped or something like that. Man, I love these clicks. <laughs> and now at editing, I finally realized that I have not mentioned the uh, skates nor the uh, grip tape that was included. So um, yeah, Tiger Eyes V2s are included as dots. They're a bit too fast for me. I don't really like fast uh, skates, so I didn't use them. I used them previously before on different mice. Um, and the grip tape uh, is basically from the same OEM as uh, Pulsar grip tapes. They're quite grippy, they're pretty good, and they're pre-cut, so that's nice. 
So both of those are also included. And there's also this little uh, piece of black square that um, has, a, has an ad adhesive on it and you can like take it out and put it on the uh, battery to make it more visually pleasing. Now let's talk about the price. The price of the Optimum mouse is gonna be at $69 plus shipping. But I'm not really sure if you also have to pay customs or taxes if you buy the Zero mouse, so don't quote me on that. Considering other alternatives, which are basically only Piranha Mods uh, mod kits, they are 90 euros. And yeah, I think that's like really expensive. So Optimum's uh, mod kit is actually cheaper. And if you try and get a Razer Viper V2 Pro used, you can basically get it for like 60 to 80 euros. And yeah, together with the mod kit price, you're basically at $150, which is nowadays a normal price for really high-end mice. But of course, if you do not want to buy a uh, Optimum Zero Mouse, or you do not have the chance to actually buy one, there are alternatives on uh, Thingiverse, a site where you can download uh, 3D files of mice and all other kinds of stuff. For instance, there's this one 3D file from Cool Mods called the GTIP, which... <laughs> GTIP, that sounds so stupid. Um, the GTIP. And it actually looks uh, quite interesting shape-wise. I don't have it. Uh, I don't have a 3D printer uh, around me and I really have to rush this review. So uh, yeah, you can print your own mouse if you have a 3D printer or if you know someone with a 3D printer or uh, you can ask on sites like FagFox uh, to make them for you for a price. So yeah, there are alternatives. I'm gonna link a few in the description. Two of them are free and one is really expensive. It costs like 30 euros just for the 3D file. And that's, in my opinion, not worth it, but that's your, that's your choice. So to round this video up, if you play fingertip grip or if you consider trying to play fingertip grip and you want the, in my opinion, absolute best and unique shape that I have tried in a long time, then this thing is just absolutely amazing. Like it feels really unique uh, the shape is just something else just because of the uh, slanted sides and the sa slanted clicks and the overall click mechanism. It feels different, awesome. It makes it's really fun to use. And um, if you manage to get one, well, unfortunately, there are only 1100 units and the drop, I think there's going to be like a huge demand. I think it's going to be sold out in like a minute or so, but we'll see. If you manage to get one, man, have fun with it. Like, I'm not gonna use any other mice whatsoever. Maybe there's a different, better mouse coming out. Maybe the Ultralight X that I ordered is gonna like blow, blow my mind, but I can't really see that, honestly. Like this thing just makes way too fun and I play so amazingly with it that I just don't wanna play any other mouse anymore. I just realized after 13 hours of editing that I forgot to mention, please like and subscribe. I would really appreciate it. I put a lot of work into this video and yeah, love you. Ice cream, so good. And yeah, that has been my review. I tried to mention everything that I possibly could and if you get it, have fun with it. And yeah, bye. I didn't actually break them. There's a pillow. I'm not stupid. <laughs>